डियर फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर नितेश गोयल फ्रॉम डी ए वी कॉलेज चंडीगढ़ डियर फ्रेंड्स आफ्टर द कम्प्लीशन ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द नेचर एंड लॉजिक ऑफ हाइपोथिस टेस्टिंग यू विल बी एबल टू नो द प्रोसीजर फॉर टेस्टिंग द हाइपोथिस यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द ओवरऑल फ्लो ऑफ द हाइपोथिस टेस्टिंग प्रोसीजर सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल I would like to give you a brief introduction about the topic. A hypothesis is an assumption that is tested from its logical or empirical consequences. A hypothesis should be clear and accurate. The two hypotheses that is null and alternate hypothesis enable the user to verify the testability of an assumption. It is possible to determine whether the hypothesis is appropriate or not with the help of hypothesis test such as parametric and non parametric test in this unit you will learn about the meaning and need for testing of hypothesis you will also learn about the concept of hypothesis testing and the various types of statistical hypothesis hypothesis according to theodorson a hypothesis is a tentative statement asserting a relationship between certain facts kerlinger also describes hypothesis as the conjectural statement of the relationship between two or more variables black and champion have described hypothesis as a tentative statement about the unknown statements that is not explaining how the variables are related to each other is no hypothesis in scientific sense hypothesis simply means an assumption or some supposition to be proved or disproved for a researcher a hypothesis is a formal question that he intends to solve thus a hypothesis may be defined as an assumption or proposition or a set of propositions set forth as an explanation for the occurrence of some specified phenomena a research hypothesis is usually a predictive statement which is capable of being tested by the application of some scientific methods that relates an independent variable to some dependent variable for instance the statement like students who receive counseling will show a greater increase in creativity than students not receiving the counseling or the automobile a is performing as well as automobile b are capable of being objectively verified and tested thus it can be concluded that a hypothesis states what we are looking for and it is a proposition which can be put to a test to determine its validity now the need for hypothesis the need for hypothesis is illustrated in the following points first the hypothesis indicates the point to the investigation and gives the direction on the study second a hypothesis specifies the sources of data that shall be studied and in what context they shall be studied also it determines the data needs hypothesis also suggests the type of research that is likely to be most appropriate a hypothesis also contributes to the development of the theory now we come to the characteristics of hypothesis hypothesis must possess the following characteristics hypothesis should be defined clearly and precisely if it is not done so the inferences drawn on its basis will never be reliable second hypothesis formulated should be such that capable of being tested if we formulate such hypotheses that are not testable it may lead the whole research down to avoid such situation a prior study may be conducted by the researcher in order to make hypothesis a testable one a hypothesis is testable if other deductions can be made from it which in turn can be confirmed or disproved by the observation third 
if a hypothesis happens to be a relational hypothesis it should clearly state the relationship between the dependent and the independent variables fourth hypothesis should be specific and must be limited in scope narrower the hypotheses are comparatively they become more testable and the researcher should develop such hypothesis only fifth hypothesis should be stated in most simple terms as far as possible so that it is easily understood by all but one must not forget that simplicity of hypothesis does not dilute its significance six the hypothesis should be consistent with most known facts that is it must be consistent with a substantial body of established facts in other words it should be one which is accepted as being the most likely seventh the hypothesis should be put to testing within a stipulated time there is no point in using an excellent hypothesis if the same cannot be tested in the reasonable time lastly hypothesis must explain the facts that actually gave rise to the need for the study in other words by using the hypothesis along with other known and accepted generalization one should be able to deduce the original problem condition thus hypothesis must actually explain what it claims to explain and it should have empirical references to support that now some of the basic concepts that concern the testing of hypothesis some of the basic concepts in the context of testing of hypothesis are first of all the most important the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis if we are to compare method a with method b about its superiority and if we proceed on the assumption that both the methods are equally good then this assumption is termed as the null hypothesis as against this we may think that the method a is superior or the method b is inferior we are then stating what is termed as alternative hypothesis the null hypothesis is symbolized as capital h with a small o and the alternate hypothesis symbolized as capital h with a small a suppose we want to test the hypothesis that the population mean that is mu is equal to the hypothesized mean that is mu ho is equal to 100 then the null hypothesis is that the population mean is equal to hypothesized mean 100 and symbolically can be expressed as null hypothesis colon mu is equal to mu ho is equal to 100 if the results do not support the null hypothesis it should be concluded that something else is true in other words the null hypothesis is rejected here if we accept the null hypothesis then we are rejecting the alternate hypothesis and if we reject the null hypothesis then we are accepting the alternate hypothesis let us take a summarized view of both the hypothesis the null hypothesis while comparing two different methods in terms of their superiority wherein the assumption is that both the methods are equally good is called the null hypothesis it is also known as the statistical hypothesis and is symbolized as already told capital h with a small o the second hypothesis is the alternate hypothesis while comparing two different methods regarding their superiority wherein stating a particular method to be good or bad as compared to the other one is called as an alternate hypothesis it symbolizes as already told capital h with a small a it is important to frame the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis before the sample is drawn in the choice of null hypothesis the following considerations are usually kept in view first the null hypothesis is the one which one wishes to disprove and alternate hypothesis is usually the one which one wishes to prove thus a null hypothesis represents the hypothesis we are trying to reject and alternative hypothesis represents all other possibilities second 
if the rejection of a certain hypothesis when it is actually true it is taken as null hypothesis because then the probability of rejecting it when it is true is alpha or the level of significance which is chosen very small third the null hypothesis should always be specific that is it should not state about or approximately a certain value generally in hypothesis testing the research is proceeded on the basis of null hypothesis keeping the alternative hypothesis in view because if null hypothesis is true one can assign the probabilities to different possible sample results but this cannot be done if we proceed with the alternative hypothesis now let's compare the null hypothesis with the alternate hypothesis so friends following are the points of comparison between the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis first the null hypothesis is always specific while the alternate hypothesis gives an approximate value second the rejection of null hypothesis involves great risk which is not in the case of alternate hypothesis null hypothesis is more frequently used in statistics than alternate hypothesis because it is of more specific nature and is not based on probabilities the second important concept under hypothesis testing is the level of significance it is always some percentage usually 5% which should be chosen with great care thought and support of valid reason if a significance level at 5% is taken then this implies the null hypothesis will be rejected when the sampling result has a less than 5% probability of occurring if null hypothesis is taken as true in other words the 5% level of significance means that the researcher is willing to take a 5% risk of rejecting the null hypothesis when it happens to be true thus the significance level becomes the maximum value of the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true and is usually determined in advance before testing the hypothesis the third concept is the test of hypothesis given a hypothesis null hypothesis and an alternate hypothesis ha a rule is developed which is known as decision rule it is this decision rule on the basis of which we accept or reject the null hypothesis for example if null hypothesis is that a certain lot is good there are very few defective items in it against the alternate hypothesis that the lot is not good or there are too many defective items in it then we must decide the number of items to be tested and the criterion for accepting or rejecting the hypothesis we may test any of the 10 items in the lot and plan a decision that if there are none or only one defective item among the 10 null hypothesis will be accepted otherwise null hypothesis will be rejected the next concept is the errors in the context of testing of hypothesis there are basically two types of errors one is that the researcher may reject the null hypothesis when null hypothesis is actually true and known and is then known as type 1 error the second type of error is when the researcher accepts null hypothesis when in fact null hypothesis is not true and this error is known as type 2 error in other words type 1 error occurs when we reject a hypothesis which should have been accepted and type 2 error occurs when we accept a hypothesis which should have been rejected type 1 error is denoted by alpha and type 2 error is denoted by beta the two tailed and the one tailed test in the context of hypothesis testing these two terms are very relevant and used very often and thus making it important to understand clearly a two tail test rejects the null hypothesis if say the sample mean is significantly higher or lower than the hypothesized value of the mean of the population such a test is suitable when the null hypothesis is some specified value and the alternative hypothesis is a value not equal to the specified value of the 
null hypothesis. The acceptance and rejection regions in the case of a two-tailed test with 5% significance level are presented here in the diagram. If the significance level is decided at 5% and the two-tailed test is to be used, the probability of the rejection area will be 0.05, which is equally split on the both tails of the curve as 0.025 and that of the acceptance region will be 0.95 as shown the above curve. If we take mu is equal to 100 and if our sample mean deviates significantly from 100 in any of the two directions, then the null hypothesis should be rejected. But if the sample mean does not deviate significantly from mu, in that case null hypothesis shall be accepted. But there are situations when one tail test is most appropriate. A one tail test would be applied when we are to test, for instance, whether the population mean is either lower or higher than some hypothesized value. For instance, if a null hypothesis is mu is equal to mu of null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis is mu less than the mu of null hypothesis. When we are interested in what is known as left tail test, wherein there is one rejection region and only on the left tail, as illustrated in the diagram. If our mu is equal to 100 and if our sample mean deviates significantly from 100 in the lower direction, null hypothesis should be rejected. Otherwise, we shall accept the null hypothesis at a certain level of significance. If the significance level in the given case is kept at 5%, then the rejection region will be equal to 0.05 of the area in the left tail as has been shown in the curve. In case our null hypothesis where mu is equal to mu of null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis, mu is more than the mu value of alternate hypothesis, we are then interested in what is known as one tail test right tail and the rejection region will be on the right tail of the curve as shown in the figure. So after having a detail on the concepts, let's have the procedure for hypothesis testing. To test a hypothesis means to find out whether the hypothesis is valid or not. In hypothesis testing, the main focus area is to know whether to accept the null hypothesis or not. It includes all those steps that are undertaken for making a choice between the two possible actions that is the rejection and acceptance of a null hypothesis. The various steps involved in hypothesis testing are stated below. First, making a formal statement. The first step is to make a formal statement of the null hypothesis and also of the alternate hypothesis. In other words, both the hypothesis should be clearly stated. For example, an engineer wishes to test the load bearing capacity of an old bridge which must be more than 10 tons. In that case, the hypothesis can be stated as under the null hypothesis where mu will be equal to 10 tons and the alternate hypothesis where mu is more than 10 tons. The formulation of hypothesis is a very important step which must be accomplished with utmost care and in accordance with the objectives and nature of the study under consideration. It also indicates whether the researcher should use a one-tail test or a two-tail test. If an alternate hypothesis is of the type greater than or the type lesser than, a one-tail test must be used. But when an alternate hypothesis is of type whether greater or smaller, then we use a two-tailed test. Step number two, selecting a significance level. The hypotheses are tested on a pre-specified level of significance. Generally, either 5% level or 1% level is adopted for the purpose. There can be different factor which may suggest choosing a specific level of significance as first, the magnitude of the difference between the sample means, second, the size of the samples, third, the variability of measurements within samples and last, whether the hypothesis is directional or non-directional. 
A directional hypothesis is one which predicts the direction of the difference between, say, the means. The third step, deciding the distribution to use. When the level of significance has been decided, the next step in hypothesis testing is to determine an appropriate sampling distribution. The choice generally remains between the normal distribution and the T distribution. The step 4. Selecting a random sample and computing an appropriate value. Another step is to select a random sample and compute an appropriate value from the sample data concerning the test statistic utilizing the relevant distribution. In other words, draw a sample to furnish the empirical data. The fifth step, calculation of the probability. Now, one has then to calculate the probability that the sample result would diverge as widely as it has from the expectations if the null hypothesis were in fact true. The last step in hypothesis testing is to compare the probability calculated in the previous step with the specified value of alpha that is the significance level. If the calculated probability is equal to or smaller than the alpha value in case of one tail test and alpha upon 2 in case of two tail test, then reject the null hypothesis or accept the alternative hypothesis. However, if the calculated probability is greater then accept the null hypothesis. Now friends, after having understood all the intricacies of the hypothesis, now it's time to summarize. The present module describes the meaning of hypothesis, which, the base, which is the basis of almost every research, especially in social sciences. Hypotheses are the propositions that a researcher make and later proves it on the basis of data collected and analyzed. There are two types of hypotheses, that is null hypothesis and the other is termed as alternate hypothesis. To prove a hypothesis to be true, a researcher needs to apply certain tests like t-test, z-test, f-test, etc. And a proper set of steps are required to be followed. On the basis of these tests, only a hypothesis is either accepted or rejected. Thank you.